was built as a freighter for FedEx. FedEx were able to specify it as a uh, uh, with a with a, a, a better floor, and it's got a better door. So other than uh, you know, most of them you see are ex passenger airplanes that have been converted. This one came out of the production line as a cargo aircraft. Flaps at full. Flaps full, yeah, and it's interesting that. When they changed the engines, they restricted the, uh, the flaps. Normal 727s have uh, 40 degrees of flap, uh, but when they re-engined it, they, they didn't need the 40 uh, degrees of flap, so our maximum is 30. I see. So is that locked 30, out at 30? On the flight deck, there's a, uh, a mechanical restriction. You'll see on the tracks that they, where, where it stopped. The only bits left on the wing there it is are crazy. the ailerons. So yes. So that's a, uh, our normal aileron and our low speed aileron is uh, out on the... Uh, oh, I see, okay. We really use our low speed because if to do anything other means you get lots of twisting on the wing. All speed aileron. Five, and you can see at uh, flaps two rather the inboard slats yes, come in, they, start they to retract. I see. And then numbers um, number one and number four slats. In fact, they're all coming in because it's gone all the way through uh, to the up position. But normally in the slats, in the flaps two position, these two slats will. Is that auto? So as yeah. you move the uh, the flap lever, the flaps move and the slats move together. Yes. Yes. Uh, I see. The centre engine is number two engine. It doesn't have a reverser because it doesn't need it. The, the, the two engines on the pod are so powerful that, they, that they, they just take care of the reverse anyway, so there's, there's no real reason to have them. We're going to see the, uh, the buckets. Fantastic, look at that. So yeah, when we uh, land, we can use the reversers to slow us down. We, we, we rely on the brakes, the reversers are additional uh, deceleration methods. Up on it, can you attract them more? Okay, so we have a, a boom either side of the airplane with a centre section. It's got 15 nozzles either side, so 30 nozzles in total. The fluid comes out from the uh, area that we just looked at uh, inside the airplane into this centre section and then out through the boom uh, and out through the uh, nozzles. It's quite scientific how it works. So you have to get the right amount of fluid on, the, on, on a spill. If you put too much on, it'll just sink through and it doesn't mix with the oil and doesn't have the, the correct effect. If you put too little on, it'll just roll off the, off the top and again, doesn't have the right effect. This whole system has been designed, manufactured and installed by 2XL in the UK. And it, it's, a, it's a fact that the, that the, uh, the company is ju justifiably proud of. You know, we've created the only certified um, aerial dispersant system in the world, uh, jet-based. So this is the uh, fill panel and we use this, not surprisingly, to fill the system and uh, it's quite straightforward. We use the, the different fill valves here to um, pump fluid into the uh, tanks uh, of the, uh, on the aeroplane. So tanks one through seven are all uh, um, controlled independently by these different, different switches. This is again designed, in manufactured and installed uh, by 2XL. The tanks are reflected on the, on the flight engineer's panel. He's got separate valves to use to, to open it. We use um, fill valves on here and supply valves uh, on the flight engineer's panel. Every single bit designed and built by, the, uh, by 2XL. We have contractors helping build things like the tanks, for example, but it's all, all done in, in the UK. It's important to note that these tanks are all double skinned, so if the fluid was to leak, it would only leak into the outer shell. 
it wouldn't leak into onto the, uh, the cargo compartment at all. So it's for as, as operators, it's completely dry for us. You know, the old Hercules that I used to operate in, there was fluid sloshing around occasionally. You know, but this is completely sealed, completely dry for the for the crew. This is a manifold here that goes uh, connects all the tanks together. Even the vent manifold is all um, uh, piping within a pipe. So it's all secondary contains. You can see that everything now is all bolted to the seat traps. Uh, this this um, uh, device here, and each tank is each uh, is, is bolted down to the main frame of the airplane. In effect, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're tested to 9G. So, in the event of a 9G incident that the crew would possibly survive, uh, the tank should stay where they are in the, in the aeroplane. Typically on a, uh, on a large spill, we'd go out and we'd do our first um, spray, then we'd land back at the uh, forward operating base, we'd refill or replenish the, uh, the, the, the dispersant, and at the same time, we'd replenish the air. All in all, it takes about 30 minutes. We could be looking at being here for 30 to 45 minutes after uh, getting on, on the chops. spraying uh, then the captain takes over controls pilot flying okay so the pilot flies the aircraft uh, keeps us at 150 feet keeps us on on track um, you, you'll see it's a, you know, a classic aircraft so uh, it hasn't got an overly complicated autopilot um, uh, and when we're spraying at low level then it's all manual flights so we, we do an awful lot of manual flying which is unusual for this sort of class of aircraft so left hand seats flying uh, and as the FO, I'm responsible for thrust, so I keep us at the right speed. Um, we tend to keep uh, engines one and three up at a, a static power level, so that thrust is always available from those two, because it takes quite a long time for them to spool up. Uh, and then the control of the centerline air, um, engine, engine number two, uh, the speed. That's a smaller engine, so it's got instantaneous thrust. Um, it's remarkably stable uh, and all phases are flying, it's an absolute dream to fly.